electrophoresis and lab safety. So electrophoresis. We're at the DNA, and in order to do this, we add a restriction enzyme to the DNA sample. So a restriction enzyme, or like it's like scissors that cut the DNA sample into smaller fragments. More than one restriction enzyme can be used, and you can also add a dye if necessary. Next, we're going to prepare the gel with wells for our DNA sample. So here's an image of a gel, and it has little wells for the DNA sample to go into. Agarose gel is mixed, and then it's cooled. DNA moves through this gel. Ephidium bromide is added to the gel as well. And it's a dye and it allows DNA li to light up under UV light. Running the electrophoresis. So a micropipette is used to insert a DNA ladder and the DNA samples into wells. So here is an image of a DNA ladder. So here's an image of a DNA ladder. So a DNA ladder is like a ruler used to measure where the DNA sizes should be. So they're known DNA sizes. Next we place the gel that we made into the gel box and the wells should be placed closer to the negative side of the gel box. Next, we turn the power source on and wait until the samples travel along the gel. So here's an example of the gel, and the wells would be here on top. And when the electricity is turned on um, and the current flows from negative, the negative side of the gel here to the positive side. If you run the gel, if you don't run the gel long enough, um, there won't be enough time for the DNA to spread to the other side of the gel. And if you run it too long, the DNA will run off the gel. It'll just continue to move forward. So the result. So after you've run your electrophoresis gel, um, the longer fragments of DNA will take longer to travel to the gel. So they stay closer to the negative side. So here's our wells that we placed our DNA in. And here would be longer samples, longer fragments of DNA. And the smaller fragments travel further down the gel towards the positive side. So down at the bottom here, we have smaller fragments of DNA. So something to think about um, when thinking of the DNA moving through the gel is think about going through a maze. So if you were to go through a maze alone, it would probably be faster than if you were to go through a maze maybe linking hands with four other people. So if it was a chain of five people, it would be har harder and longer to navigate through the maze. So now we're going to talk about electrophoresis lab safety. So protection. You always want to wear gloves and safety goggles. Hazardous chemicals are used when performing electrophoresis. Um, and these chemicals are toxic and they can cause irritation. Electric shock. Working with electricity has a risk of electric shock. Electrophoresis boxes at 100 volts can provide a lethal shock of 25 milliamps. So be very careful. Um, so you want to check to make sure the power cords are undamaged. And do not turn the power on without water in the gel box. Um, and make sure your tabletops are dry before you turn on the power. So before loading the DNA, so we want to make sure that the wells are located on the negative electrode end of the box. So here's a picture of a 
gel box and we have the wells here towards the negative side. So make sure the power source, power source is within reach um, and do not move the gel box once you fill the wells because this can move the DNA sample and contaminate the other wells. And you want to place the box in a safe place where it won't get knocked off your lab bench. Okay, next, slowly pour the running water or buffer into the gel box. So here's a picture with the beaker pouring it into the gel box. And you want to avoid splashing or spilling, so again, pour slowly. The gel must be completely covered with the water. So you want to fill both sides of the box and then keep filling until there's a layer on top of the gel. Next, loading the DNA. So you want to carefully load the DNA into the gel using a micropipette. So here's the cartoon image of a micropipette loading it into a little well. You want to use a steady hand and you place the sample only in one well to avoid cross-contamination of samples. So you don't want DNA from this well to get into this well where you're going to place another sample. And here's a real-life image of a micropipette and a sample being placed into a well. And you don't want to dig your tip deep into the well either. So running the gel. So make sure that the power supply is turned off until you're ready to run it. And make sure the lid is secure. So you want to hook the gel box here um, to the power source, which is here, by connecting the wires from the lid to the power source. And you want to connect the red to the red and black to the black. Once you turn the power on, you can check for bubbles on the wires. So you'll see these wires in here, and bubbles will be coming out of them. So the bubbles indicate that there's an electrical current flowing through the gel box. So this is correct. Reading the results. So we then compare the DNA of different individuals on the gel. So when you run a gel, you have DNA from known individuals and some from an unknown individual. So here's a picture of a gel, like the ones we made in class, and you can compare the DNA that you know to the unknown DNA. So here's an example of a gel, a little image of a gel. So for example, if we have a crime scene and we found D this, these DNA at the crime scene, so this is the DNA of a victim. So we know this is the victim. This isn't the person that committed the crime. So this is the victim's DNA. And then we have DNA from one suspect and DNA from another suspect. So compared to the DNA found at the crime scene, this is the sus suspect that was at the crime scene because this DNA is similar to that DNA. So you can see that these lines are similar and it's different from this suspect here and different from the victim's DNA as well. Okay, so now let's practice. So we'll do this one first. So we have images of gels and this is DNA from a blood stain and this is DNA from different people. So whose blood stain is this? If we compare this row to these other rows. Correct. So this blood stain belongs to John because it, this is similar to John's DNA here. You can see that these line up, these DNA fragments line up. Okay, so this next one 
is another example. So this is DNA found at a crime scene, and these are three suspects. So which suspect's DNA was found at the crime scene? So suspect number two's DNA is similar to this DNA that's found at the crime scene. You can tell that it's different from these other two suspects.